Thank you. Has anybody heard of a lemming and what a lemming is? Well, if you don't know, I'll tell you. A lemming is a little furry rodent that uh, basically jumps off cliffs into the water and drowns. And they don't just do that by the ones or twos, they do it by the thousands. It's almost as if a, a senior lemming, the head lemming, decides, hey guys, let's go for a swim. So they all go, yeah, let's go for a swim. So they all run to the cliff and they all jump off and it's like, right, now everyone swim. And they go, swim, glug, 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 and they all drown. And society today is very much the same. If you go into a school, you might find a head lemming which decides that they will take drugs. And then a whole bunch of other kids will come behind and, and go along with that head lemming. Or they might be lucky, there might be one young in individual that says no to drugs, and a whole bunch of other kids come behind. And that's the direction that those people go in. And today we will find that the business culture has changed a, dr a tremendous amount over the last five, 10, particularly 15 years. And what I want to talk about today is ethical business. If you go back to the literature that we would be reading over the last 100 to 150 years of, of the success of what's made businesses really work well, it's always been based on character. It's been based on things like integrity, service, loyalty, gentleness, understanding. But it seems like over the last 5, 10, 15 years, it's been replaced or it's slowly crept in. And it's the personality ethic. It's where it seems like websites today, their aim really is to manipulate you, lubricate the wheels of a system which will extract as much out of you as it possibly can. So what I want to suggest today is that the success of the world is based on character. But over the last 10 years, it's like this personality has crept in where there is no character and it's all about lubrication. And with that, is it, you know, could that be a contribution to what's happened in the world today? I think it probably has. There's problems all over the world with finances, etc. So, I believe then it was a character ethic. Today, it's slowly being replaced by the personality ethic. I want to quickly introduce my company to you. Started 14 years ago when a tornado went through my hometown in Selsey. I had no money. I had no business experience. Um, I had a very limited education. But I saw many tradesmen come down from all over the UK to rip homeowners off. There were cowboy trades coming down and they were basically overcharging or even stealing money off, off consumers. And I, I looked at the time at the guilds and the federations. I looked at what local government was doing and central government was doing. And I couldn't see an answer to this problem where tradesmen were doing a really poor job. So I set out almost from day one I want to make a difference. I want to bring something to the UK which is of real value. I didn't set out thinking, wow, I want to build something that's going to make me a tremendous amount of money. If you build something that's of worth and, and something that, that the consumer or business needs and they're interacting with it and it's, it's got that whole word worth around it, your money will automatically flow. I've never had one single business meeting around my board table with my senior managers saying, how can we extract more money out of people? It's never happened. It's always been, how can I build more worth into what we're doing for other people? How can we make more of a difference in what we're doing? But today I'll stand here and, and I'm not being proud or big headed, but we're turning over 160,000 euros a week. And it hasn't even been designed to do that. It's been designed to, to work on the character ethic and to make a difference. 
Begin with the end in mind. So what does that mean? I don't think many people today really know where they're going. They really haven't got a plan for their personal life, for their social life, for their business life, for their family life. They don't really know where they're going. And I just want you to imagine something for a moment, that you're at a funeral, and um, it's very quiet, very somber, and there's a resounding atmosphere of love and appreciation for the person that's, that's died. And there's going to be four speakers, and they're all going to be speaking about the person that's died. And then you suddenly realize that it's actually you that's died, and it's your funeral. What would you want someone from your immediate family to say about you? What would you want from someone from your extended family to say about you? What about someone from your work? And what about someone from a social group, of friend, friendships or something? What would you really want them to say? If you were to take the time, unfortunately, few of you will do this. That's my experience. But if you were to take the time and to meditate on those things, you'll actually touch some real core important values. And I bet money will hardly come into it. Money will be a byproduct. Oh, I've really wanted to help this person. I want people to remember me for achieving this and this and helping these people. And of course, money is that vehicle to make that happen. But begin with the end in mind. Know what your final destination is going to be. They say sticks and stones will never will, will break my bones, but names will never hurt. And my parents used to say to me, oh, you shouldn't care what people say about you or think about you. I actually very much disagree with that. I actually believe that what people think about me and what people say about me is really, really important because it's my reputation. And because that's a real core value of mine, that's what I aim at all the time. I would never do something to you that I wouldn't want done to myself. So what's your working frame? What's your end goal in life? Your end goal in your business? Begin with the end of, in mind. Take that time to find out. Also, when you've found that framework, you can build some expectation around your life. When you know what you want to achieve, when you've got that framework and you're looking forward, you can start to build expectations. And expectations are key. Without expectations, you'll just bounce along the bottom of life. Expectations are like a magnet that will pull you towards something you believe is going to happen, whether it be good or whether it be bad. If you've got this expectation that this job role or this business that I'm, I'm, I'm involved in now is probably not going to be very successful, how are, how are you going to act towards that? But if you've got an expectation that, hey, I'm going to start this business and I'm going to be incredibly successful and I've got this framework which I'm going to work, work within, within my values and these are my goals... And if you feed upon that, it is. It's like a magnet that just pulls you towards those expectations. But very often, you can have those expectations and then the pressures of life come upon you. And the pressures of the cash flow and the problems with staff and the problems with the market and the problems with marketing come, come around you and those expectations can start to, to dwindle. But hunger is the key. Let me just read you something quickly. Fish are biting. And after catching a 70 centimeter pike, the local man raised the fish from, you know, for a photograph. And the fish lurched forward and grabbed his nose with his mouth. He grabbed onto it so tightly that the fisherman had to be taken to the local doctors where a surgeon actually surgically removed the fish. If you want something so badly, do you know what? 
the chances are you won't let go. And do you know what? The chances are you'll probably end up getting it. Hunger is the key. But you've got to feed the hunger. For me, one of the, one of the biggest words in my life is significance and recognition. Those are my drivers. That is what I work towards in my life. And how do I feed that hunger? For me, I imagine being before my queen. Arise, Sir Kev. I want to be knighted. I want to be recognized as the man that's ended the rogue trade problem in the UK. That's my driver. That's my, that's my goal. That's what feeds me. I picture that happening in my life. Not just, not just at once a month, but I'll meditate it. I'll meditate upon it. And I'll physically see myself in front of my, my queen being knighted for my services to the country. But make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. Make sure that it's not just for profit. Make sure that you're looking at the character ethic. People in their environment. This is, a, this is a key I just wanted to slip in at the end because it's so important when you're growing a business. One of these types of meetings many years ago, there was a questions and answers and someone said, Kev, how have you grown such a big business? And I've said, hmm, I haven't really grown a business. I've never really looked at it like that. What I've done is I've focused, this, focused on people and I've, I've built people up. And when the people around you are built up, you'll, you'll naturally have a successful business. But the environment is absolutely key. Most of us are like the rest of us. I'm very much like you, you're very much like me. You wouldn't want me to do something to you, you know, that you wouldn't have done to yourself. You know, I think that's universal. But in business, if the bottom line the most important thing is the bottom line and how much profit and money have we extracted from this sector. If that's what it is, if that's the driving force, then really it falls into the personality ethic. Really it falls into how can we manipulate people into, into getting things. But within the environment of my company, I employ about 90 people. I would say to my staff, Okay, here's a situation you've got with a supplier or a customer. If you were the supplier or the customer, what would you want to happen to you? And I empower my staff to make those decisions. And if the decision is, we've really messed up on this one, Kev, we should give them their money back, my staff are empowered to do that because that's the right thing. So you can imagine my staff now they're not fish out of water. They're not a fish out of water. They're not in an environment where they think, oh, I'm being forced, I'm being pressured into making things and doing what the boss says, and I don't feel, I feel awkward going back to this customer or this supplier and saying they can't have this or they can't have that. Is it any, is it any little wonder that in the UK, and I believe it's worse in Serbia, that the average person works for a company for 18 months and then they, then they go off trying to find something better. In 14 years of running a company and having 90 people work for me, I, I, I can only remember four people leaving my employment. It's because I give, that, I give them that environment where they feel as if what they are doing is right. I give them that environment so that they've got the ability to do to others only what they would have done to themselves. And does that make my company stand out? Absolutely. Does that make my company very, very different from the vast majority of the companies in my same sector? Absolutely. And do you know what my customers say now? Do you know what my tradesmen that join us say? Do you know what um, our suppliers say? Do you know what? I can't believe that in, in this day and age, there is still a company that would have the ethics that this company has. 
And is it any wonder today that even in recession in the UK, where companies haven't grown for two years, that I'm growing 2.5% every month? Is it a coincidence? Absolutely not. The character ethic is so, so important. Decide. Make a decision how you want to run your life, how you want to run your business. Is this based on character, integrity, loyalty, friendship, gentleness? Or are you going to change and be a lemming and do what all the, the new companies that are doing in the world today and decide, no, I'm going to manipulate people. I'm, I'm going to use content management systems and I'm, I'm, I'm going to use the software to, to make out that, that my customer is important, but really the bottom line is how much money I make. I'd suggest, please, go for the character, the, the character ethic. Find out what your core values are. If you don't know what your core values are, how can you possibly even achieve anything? How can you set targets? How do you know if you've achieved anything in life? Go to that funeral. Write those things down. Build your expectations. If you don't believe you can achieve something, you'll never act upon it. It's so simple. Most people have no expectations, or if they have, it's really loose. Really loose. Someone might say, well, I started a business a few weeks ago, and my expectation is that we'll be successful. And, well, that's what I'm hoping for. But really define what your expectations are. They are like a magnet. Get photographs of what you want to achieve. Put them on your walls, in, in, in your living room, in your business, in your toilet, in your kitchen. We're all visual people. If you can see what you want to achieve, what your expectation is, and if you see that every day, it's like a magnet. It will draw you, and your, and your actions will come from it. And if you want something so bad, never let it go, and you'll probably get it. Feed that hunger as much as you possibly can. And create an environment people want to operate in. Put yourself in their shoes. How would you want to be employed? How would you want to be an, a, a supplier or a customer? Treat people the way you would want to. If you catch this, it will revolutionize your life. It's taken me in six years from a 200,000 pound company to a 6.8 million company. Thank you very much. <laughs>